speaker, Pierre Nanterme, chairman and CEO of Accenture. Thank you to welcome him. Pierre Nanterme. This way. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here with uh, all of you. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank my good friend, uh, François Barrault, and all his team, and as well the world uh, uh, being done by uh, IDEAT. When I think about IDEAT, I think about the future. It's extremely important that we have the organization and the industry which are looking beyond the horizon and uh, making sure that we're all going to be what, what we're calling future ready. Because if you're not future ready in an environment which is changing so rapidly, you're becoming a laggard, and if you're becoming a laggard, you disappear. So, uh, and we know that it does exist uh, 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 as we speak. So it's absolutely fundamental. We, on a regular basis, look uh, in what we're calling the new new, and I guess what, we, what we've seen is indeed what after next. What is the new new? And I look at the agenda. Uh, we need uh, all of us uh, to understand, or at least to anticipate. Uh, and then, what is always the most important, understand the business use cases. Because again, what we said is technology is an enabler, is a mean to an end, is not the end uh, of it. And it's very important, we're all working industry by industry uh, to uh, understand what might be the use case which is going to create the value uh, moving forward. So thanks a lot, for Francois. It's a, it's a pleasure working with you uh, uh, and your team. And I like your thought-provoking style. Uh, uh, and I'm sure I'm speaking on, on behalf of many people. Uh, physical is back. And I would say physical is back with a revenge. Uh, it's interesting, and I'm going to apologize, blame myself. Probably I've been among the people uh, 30 years ago uh, explaining to many of our clients that the banking branches will disappear, the telco branches will disappear, physical will disappear, the, the, maybe there would be something around the brick and mortar, but we move, we, we're going to move uh, to a fully digital world uh, and uh, managing the physical asset uh, going to be a big challenge. Uh, reality is, uh, after 30 years, we still have physical facilities in all industries. It's not going with some challenges, clearly. Uh, and uh, we will all have in our industries to figure out how to maximize the value uh, of the physical. But they are back with a revenge for a very, I guess, simple reason. Because the question is why physical is back? Because all the logic could be, there should be, the physical should be outdated. Today, everything should be done uh, digitally. And I think there is a combination of factor which is explaining why physical is back and why we can talk now about the physical uh, is, and I would say a few words on this, the digital revolution especially with the B2C, is getting very mature. So we're getting to some extent to a, a level of maturity where customers, people, are starting to get used to these technologies. And uh, they're extremely good in using them. And when you're extremely good to use them, you want something else. You want to experiment the next level of convenience, user experience, and, and I guess it's going to be in this context of the physical. The second uh, driver for this new revolution, if you will, is of course the rise of industry X.0. Uh, so you, you might argue that industry X.0 is about the uh, digital applied to the industrial. No, I mean, the B2C will play in it. It's, 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 it is the consolidation of new technologies to create superior uh, user experience, what we are calling moving from personalized to hyper-personal experience. 
And I think this is this trend uh, which, is at, which is at play. Uh, with the industry X.0, or you could call that, uh, which is the blend of the uh, IoT, the rise of the sensors, uh, the rise of the connected platform, the ability to connect machine to machine, people to people, people to machine, machine to people, device to device, sensor to sensor. Gonna create a brand new experience, let's call it in the physical products, and together with the current digital revolution we have mastered uh, these last years, it's creating this new step, if you will, of this uh, physical revolution. So just a word, and maybe some uh, <coughs> data, and I will go uh, quickly. Uh, what, why we could claim that the digital revolution we've seen is, is starting to mature. Uh, if you look at uh, retail banking, telco, travel, a lot has been done uh, with all these industries because they were subject to disruption. Uh, all of them, some been significantly disrupted. I think uh, 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 Maurice highlighted the case of retail as, a, as an illustration. Uh, uh, the fintech has been, uh, has been around as well, the banking, probably with a bit less disruption. But if you look in the detail, clearly the payment market been massively disrupted for the, uh, for the incumbent. Uh, and, and so they worked a lot on digitalizing uh, their transactions. So that's the point number one. The industry turbocharged their investment to be more digital and to avoid the risk of digitalization, of uh, disruption. Second, people, especially the young people, they love it. And if you look at some of the survey uh, we uh, delivered recently, 84% uh, of the 14 to 17 years old are interested using voice-enabled digital assistant and uh, versus 50% for the people over 50. And it's very consistent across all our analysis. The young people are massively adopters of this new technology, especially AI. They want more, not less. The challenges, the resistance, maybe because of uh, maturity, we know more, uh, are coming from more experienced and mature people because they could see the issue of privacy, regulation, and, 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 and the situation is a bit different. But we've seen an unlimited appetite for uh, the use of digital technologies. Uh, if you look at the new, new, it's the same thing. The younger people, they want to use now augmented reality, virtual reality when they are uh, 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 considering clothes uh, and uh, other uh, uh, outfit. 3D uh, manuals, uh, meeting virtually, all of this now is becoming bread, uh, bread and butter. And frankly, AI is at the heart of that revolution, and I know uh, uh, our friend Fabrice Brégé and with Palantir will certainly elaborate on how AI is, is indeed a key enabler uh, of, that, uh, uh, of that revolution. So they're ready. They pleased, and they want more. So what it is they want? They want something more personal, and this is what I mentioned by moving to something more personalized. Yes, you know me, but moving from personalized to extremely personal. It is about me. And you're starting to see some frustration from the uh, digital users of uh, the different uh, uh, sites or uh, the uh, different applications. 40% uh, of the consumers say they are burdened by too much choices. They are claiming that they are receiving too much information. 
and the information is not that relevant. Because you've been to, you know, across three or four sites, suddenly you're going to receive a flow of information regarding the site or the preference and the thing. This is what we call personalization, not to be highly personal. People are fed up with that. And they want something much more, uh, uh, much more personal, what we're calling the four R, les quatre R. They want to be remembered, recommended, with relevance, uh, and uh, recognized, remembered, recommended with high, extremely high relevance. They don't want to be overwhelmed, which is the case today, by all these banners because they uh, visited some, uh, uh, some site. 75% of the customers, so all these data are coming from our analysis from Fjord, our uh, design uh, organization. Every year, they deliver the Fjord trends around the uh, trends in the consumer world. And you can see the level of frustration of the users of the digital world is increasing massively. Uh, so it's time uh, to do uh, something different and to, raise, and to raise the game. And to raise the game, uh, it's all about now combining, I would say, probably four capabilities. At least this is the way we, we, we look at it. If you want to play in the uh, physical, the capability you need will be on one hand superior design capabilities, but which one? Uh, what we're calling design in living services. So the services that are going to provide a value to you, plus product design and services coming from product. Just as an element of illustration, given this shift, this last couple of years, we made uh, a bit of less than 10 acquisitions, 50% uh, in creative agencies, on more the living and creative design, and the other one, you would put more in industry x.0, around product design and product services. How are you going to put the service in the product? And this is where you reconcile uh, the digital and the physical. Second, at the heart of it, the artificial intelligence. And finally, you will need to be master in connected platform uh, slash IoT. So I guess the name of the game for, for us will be moving forward to master these different technologies. And by artificial intelligence, of course, uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, all the uh, capabilities regarding the voice, and we think about the chat box, regarding the view, uh, you're talking about the augmented reality, virtual reality, and other uh, uh, new application. And you're thinking about the data and, and, and the thought process through deep le learning uh, and algorithmic, and moving forward, maybe uh, quantum computing. So it's a new set of capabilities in order to create that new experience. Just to give you an illustration, uh, and I will close with this one. Uh, Cop Italia. Cop Italia is the largest retailer. It's interesting that Maurice mentioned a retailer because this is certainly the industry which is under a massive uh, pressure in terms of reinvention their uh, physical experience. And uh, uh, what we did with Cop Italia is to create probably what would be the first fully physical retail store. And when I say fully physical retail store, because it has nothing to do taking a store and putting some digital apps and capabilities. Uh, for us, this is not physical. It, it, it is just putting some digital capabilities in an existing environment. Here, we using the design capabilities, the artificial intelligence, and the connected platform, in that case with Microsoft, uh, we totally reinvented the experience. Just, just two or three illustrations. 
For instance, we have, we have used Kinect technology. I mean, Kinect, you remember, it was the gaming uh, system of, uh, of Microsoft, because we don't want people to use their smartphone, to look at an app. Uh, all of this is complex, is difficult, is not user-friendly. Uh, but just showing the product. So you, uh, to some extent, disintermediate your device. Uh, and by just showing a product, then you will have all the information you need uh, in terms of uh, nutrition, allergia, uh, other products that you can uh, consider uh, with this one, waste. So it has a lot to do, as you might imagine, in COP. They put a lot of emphasis on sustainability, good food. And they immerse that uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the shelves. Uh, uh, same thing with the, the shelving la la laid out. Uh, we put all sorts of uh, technology. It's like embedded software. We embedded the digital in all the, uh, in all the facility. So you can have information such as who's been buying this product. Is it the best product of the day? Uh, uh, you could do some cross-selling and, and having uh, more information. And of course, uh, you pay directly uh, with, your, uh, with your technology without any card or even without any uh, smartphone. I think the idea of physical is this, is not to put a bit of digital in a branch, uh, to, to show something. It's all about embedding, having a unique, seamless experience I think it's going to be exactly the same. We're working on this uh, uh, as well. Uh, the, I mean, the connection between the home and the car. And you know, if we all, we all believe in the autonomous car, the connected car, at least at the automated car, you see the continuum when the car will be an extension of the home. Of course, you want to have exactly the same experience. If I started a series on, uh, I will not say on what, <laughs> Uh, uh, on any box, uh, I, I, I want to continue the experience and all of this uh, should be absolutely easy, seamless. So physical is back, it, it's, it's a blend, it's not uh, one plus one equal physical, it, it, it is the same and for me it is indeed the consolidation of the B2C plus the industry X.0 uh, combining the new uh, technologies from the living services design, product services design, artificial intelligence, and connected platform to deliver a uh, hyper-personalized experience for your clients. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Pierre, and thank you for your, for your vision on uh, this uh, digital world. <laughs> <laughs>